Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be diving into a very powerful topic to understand in sports card investing. That PSA Mint 9s can sometimes be much better investments than Jim Mint 10s. So I'm going to be comparing historical sales of some of the biggest names in sports. These are not like obscure sales of people that you hardly know. I'm also going to be identifying some of the factors that led to these PSA 9 sales having a much higher return on investment than their PSA 10 counterparts. And make sure and stay tuned till the end of the video where I'll outline a PSA Mint 9 investment that I think is an awesome opportunity right now. That's enough talk though, let's get into this. All right guys, first up is Le Goat, LeBron James. Uh, his PSA 10 has been selling somewhere between 7,500 and 8,500. Uh, the last sales for 7,500, I'm going to say, let's say 8,000 is a good price for what they're selling for right now. So I have made up a breakdown here. We can do pop report price now. The price three months ago in December, which is as far back as eBay will go, uh, it'll figure our profit, profit percentage, and profit per $1,000 invested. This will be linked in the description, so you can check that out, download it for yourself if you would like. Um, but for right now, the PSA 10, we're gonna say 8,000. And if we go back in December, we're just gonna go to the last listing on here. And PSA 10, let's see, five grand, 5,600, 4,700. We're just gonna say, we're gonna say five grand. We'll just say five grand. And we will put that in in December, 5,000. So our profit, three grand, 60%, $600 on $1,000 invested. Not bad. All right. Then we will check out the PSA 9. We're going to see right, right now, March 19th. This is a Mint OC, so that one doesn't count. Um, looks like two grand, 2300, 2300, 2100. Let's just say right now, uh, 22, 2200, 2200. Let's put that in. 2200. And in December, we were looking at prices around 1100, 1100, 1066, 1065, let's just say 1080. And that will give us a profit of 104% on the PSA 9. Between December, over the last three months, between December and now, we've seen 104% profit on the PSA 9 and 60% on the PSA 10. So we've seen 44% more profit, more return on investment from the PSA 9 than the T PSA 10. So if you were able to equal it out, if there was some type of fractional investing company that allowed you to you know, invest in that card as a whole, you would have seen $437 more with every thousand dollars invested in a PSA 9 over the PSA 10, all right? Let's look at population count because that will tell us a little bit about why we see these things happen. In order to have a situation like this where the PSA 9 gains in value, you have to have a PSA 10 that's established. And what happens is people will buy the PSA 10 first. That's where the popularity comes into play. People first want the PSA 10 and then when it gets out of range, then they go for the PSA 9. And that kind of goes back and forth over the lifespan of a card. And so um, people will buy a PSA 10, that price will get higher in comparison to where the PSA 9's at, and then the PSA 9 will catch up. It rarely goes the other way around where the PSA 9 comes up higher, but obviously, you know, if the PSA 10 is up there at that level, it will have a certain amount where it catches up. Um, so when we go over to the pop report, we're seeing LeBron James PSA 10s, 1,800, PSA 9s, 3,600, all right? So there's about twice as many PSA 9s as there are PSA 10s. 
but we're talking about a card that is selling, you know, for about a quarter, a less than a quarter, about 25%. In the case of the December, the December market, we saw this card in a PSA 9 was selling for about 20%. All right. Now it's selling for closer to, well, actually over 25%. So that right there is going to make up a lot of the difference here is just that card coming into line with where it should be selling percentage wise. So as a rule um, for cards in a reasonable range, like up to a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars, normally you'll see about a one in three, like a PSA nine will go for about a third of what a PSA 10 will go for. Um, Population count has a lot to do with that. If there are way more PSA 10s, um, then you won't, then PSA 9s, you might not see as much difference. If there are way more PSA 9s than PSA 10s, then you might see a lot more difference. You might only see that card going for 10% or, you know, 20% of what that PSA 10 is going for. All right, so we've got 1878. PSA 10, 3664, PSA 9s, only 5,000, 5,500 of those cards in either a PSA 9 or 10. So the demand is there. That's why you're seeing these prices. Um, but, you know, at this, if I had looked at this in December and saw that the PSA 9 was 1,000, the PSA 10 is 5,000, I could have told you right then that e one of two things is going to happen. Either the PSA 10 price is going to come down or the PSA 9 price is going to come up in relation to the other. All right. That's enough on this card. Let's move on to our next card here. All right, guys. The next card we're going to look at is the Mike Trout 2013 Topps Chrome Refractor. I'm a huge fan of the refractors. They have a super low pop number. Um, in basketball, the refractors are huge. They go for amazing money, really big money. And um, I think that's going to carry over to baseball and football. I think there's a lot of collectors and investors that have gotten into the market that are going to be moving on from whatever sport they started with to other sports. So like basketball was huge last year, right? A lot of people got in the market in basketball, but now they're looking to get into baseball as the baseball season is starting up towards the football se next football season. They're going to be looking into, there's going to be more people looking to get into football cards and learn that market. So I think some of this will carry over. I'm a big fan of the look of the brand of Topps Chrome Refractors. I just, I, th I think they're a great opportunity right now. So yesterday, or two days ago, the Mike Trout 2013 Topps Chrome Refractor, the sliding refractor, went for $737, 713 the day before, let's just say 730. All right, over here in our worksheet, we're gonna put that 730 price in. Um, let's look at what the PSA 9 or PSA 10 was selling for before. The earliest sale that we can get is from January 24th. So we will tr try to compare that with the PSA 9 value from the same time frame. Uh, that one was 550, 350. 553. Now, if we look up the PSA 9, uh, one just sold for $334. Um, that's a blue there. 305, 330. So we can say, let's say 325. Let's just say 325. And we're going to try to find something around that Jan January 24th mark to go off of um we've got one on february 8th for 228 we've got one here for 189 one best offer here for 144 that guy got a deal let's compare these let's just say 200 around january 24th 63 percent all right 63. So we added 30% profit by investing in a PSA 9 or an additional $300 for every $1,000 invested by investing in the PSA 9 instead of the PSA 10. 
Now let's get into the numbers a little more because these Topps Chrome Refractors are rare. They are more rare than your base cards. All right, here we are on PSA's webpage, um, 2013 Topps Chrome Baseball. Here is the Mike Trout right off the bat, number one in the set. So if we go down to the sliding refractor, we see there are 78 PSA 10s and 94 PSA 9s. So that's why we're having trouble uh, finding numbers on these cards. But that's also why these are a pretty awesome investment, in my opinion. You know, out of the 9s and 10s, there's only like 170 total. You know, the 9s, like even right now, you can pick this card up for $335. That's cheap to me of a guy that's looked at as the best baseball player in baseball right now, maybe ever. You talk to a lot of people, they'll say maybe ever. You know, you're talking about the PSA 10 730. The PSA 9 is 325. With those numbers, again, the top scrum, I think it's kind of overlooked. These later Mike Trout refractors, the Ken Griffey Jr. refractors. You know, if this was a LeBron James or a Kobe Bryant a uh, third year refractor. I mean, you're probably talking, I don't even know. I haven't looked them up in a long time. Probably 10 grand. Uh, let's look one up just for fun. One sold for $6,700. All right. 6,700 of the refractor. Here's a nine that sold for three grand. So that 6,700 number seems low. Again, sometimes when you see the PSA nine price is really close to the PSA 10 price, Sometimes that's a an indicator that shows you that, well, it's just low pop numbers. Sometimes it's an indicator that says the PSA 10 is actually undervalued. All right. So again, had we invested in the PSA 9 Mike Trout refractor over the PSA 10, we would have gained an additional $305 per $1,000 invested. Now we're going to move on to the last card I'm going to feature here. And I think this one's going to blow your mind. It definitely blew my mind. Um, I was very, very surprised to see with the popularity of this player, with the popularity of this card, how much difference there was had you invested in the PSA 9 instead of the PSA 10. All right, guys, let's look at the 2000 Bowman number 236 Tom Brady rookie card. Now, this is the base Bowman, not the Bowman Chrome, but... The base Bowman PSA 10 is selling right now. One just sold a few days ago for $8,100. All right. If we go back in our listings and look, obviously it went up big around the Super Bowl. Um, this card in a PSA 10, we're, we were seeing sales around $15,000 at one point in time. Um, and then, you know, it's come down since then. Actually, there's one here for, yeah, 15 grand. Um, but prior to that, it had you been buying back December 20th, December 30th, uh, January 1st, you're in that $4,000 to $4,600 range. Um, I'm going to try to keep it competitive between the 10 and the 9. I'm going to say 40. 4,200. We're going to go with this sale right here. 4,200. All right. The Bowman Tom Brady. Right now, we're looking at 8,100. One just sold for. And in December, one sold for 4,200. So we got a 93% profit. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 93% profit. But now let's look at the PSA 9s. On the PSA 9s, one just sold for $4,400. That seems a little out of line to me. Um, here's one for 3,000. Here's one for 2,800. Uh, that's a six. Here's one for 3,700. I'm gonna say, we'll, we'll say 3,500. Let's say 3,500 because yeah, they were up in that 35 to $4,000 range. But this is a buy it now, and I don't always trust buy it nows because somebody could just get on there with a lot of money and just say, yeah, I want that card. Boom, $4,400. It's not necessarily the, the comp that you can trust the most. You have to look at everything in context. So let's say $3,500 right, is, is what a, a PSA 9 maybe is valued at right now. 
Um, we'll put that in. Right now, the nine is around 3,500. Had we been buying this Tom Brady Bowman PSA nine in December, we could have got this card for $1,037. Here's a buy it now. The, that one was for a thousand dollars. Um, here's one ten thirty seven. Some buy it nows. It gets up to two grand. But had you been buying December twentieth, you could have picked that up for a thousand, a thousand thirty seven. Let's just say ten fifty. All right. Put that in our in our breakdown, and we have two hundred thirty three percent. You would have gained 140% more by going with the PSA 9 over the PSA 10 Tom Brady Base Bowman Rookie. That's huge. On a $1,000 investment, um, like again, if you could take $1,000 and invest it in either of those cards equally, you know, it's theoretical, but you know, that's $1,400 more you would have made over that from that PSA 9 investment than the PSA 10 or 140% more profit, even though we made 93% profit on the PSA 10, 140% more is what we had made with the PSA 9 investment. That's huge. That's way more than I thought I would find in any card, let alone a Tom Brady rookie, which should be like a pretty fluid market. It should be a market with all the people out there that are interested in Tom Brady and Tom Brady rookie cards. Like it should be a mature market that, that makes sense. So keep your eyes open because this stuff is out there and I'm getting ready to show you uh, a card that I think has huge potential. Um, I'm going to pull up, I've already got it pulled up the PSA pop report. So as you see on these cards, there's about twice as many nines as there are tens, but only about 1,500 of both together. That's another thing that helps out in this is a fairly low population count overall. All right, so 457, 1051. I'll go ahead and put that in here. Let's get on to the card that I think has a ton of potential when it comes to buying a PSA 9 as opposed to buying a PSA 10. All right, guys, what I want to look at is the 1987 Topps Tiffany Barry Bonds rookie card. I also want to look at the 1986 Topps Traded Tiffany Barry Bonds rookie card. Both of these cards, I feel like, have a ton of opportunity in that PSA 9 department. And whether you like Barry Bonds or not, whether you agree with what he did or not, um, there is a ton of opportunity here. And that's what my channel is kind of centered around, is helping you find opportunities to make money in sports cards that will help you grow your collection and just, in general, have fun in the hobby so that you stick around and love what you're doing. So the 1986 Topps Traded Tiffany would be like the premier Barry Bonds rookie card. And I always like to, you always want to be in that place. If you can get that number one card that's going to stand out, then you want to get that card. The 1986 Topps Traded Tiffany Barry Bonds PSA 10 is going for about nine grand right now. The last one sold for nine grand. The one before that a couple days ago sold for 8,900. One sold for $8,600, $8,766, about $9,000, all right? The PSA 9 is selling for around, I mean, this one sold for a grand. They have been coming down. Once people found out that he was not inducted in the Hall of Fame this year, his cards started coming down. They started going up when people thought maybe he'd make it in, although... Most players, if they don't make it in in their first two years, then they don't make it in until their last year. So a lot of people have hopes hanging on the, the idea that Barry Bonds will make it in in his 10th year. Like I said, this card's been coming down. It's down to $1,000 right now. That's a nine times difference in what his PSA 10 is going for. Now, I, you know, I think maybe the PSA 10 could come down, but one of two things has to happen. Either the PSA 9 has to go up, 
or the PSA 10 comes down. Let's look at the pop reports and I'll kind of explain that a little bit. So with the top straight Tiffany, there's 442 tens, 1,353 nines. So almost, yeah, about three times as many nines as there are tens. But that does not explain a 9x difference in the price. Um, obviously, Barry Bonds doesn't have as many collectors out there. We're not talking about a LeBron James, a Jordan, a Mike Trout, or even a Ken Griffey Jr. But there are a lot of Barry Bonds collectors out there. And if he gets into the Hall of Fame, you're going to see a lot of people become collectors that <laughs> maybe weren't before. But anyways, I think a nine times difference in the per between a PSA 9 and a PSA 10 with reasonable pop count, like a three times nines is versus tens is an a is a reasonable ratio when it comes to population reports um that i think that at a thousand dollars is a really good buy that you might see this market go down a little bit more but hall of fame voting comes around in january or february is when we would find out if he made it in the hall of fame so you don't expect it to like to don't expect to be able to wait till like december to pick these cards up um, yes, the baseball season's here. That might give it some, might give it a little bit of a boost through the baseball season. But I would plan on trying to get these if you're planning on holding them on the Hall of Fame voting. Um, I would plan on at the latest, like August, September, probably. Now, the baseball market does dip after the World Series. So in like October, November. Um, but definitely by then, I would definitely have these picked up if you're if you're hanging it on the uh, Hall of Fame voting. If you can't afford the Topps Traded Tiffany, the 86 Topps Traded Tiffany, the 87 Topps Tiffany is also a really good bet. Um, the nine is at 300 bucks right now. I actually I'm gonna I want to pick at least one of these up, if not a few. Um, that just seems way too cheap. The 10 is at $3,000 right now. So you got a 1 in 10 difference between the 9 and the 10. And if we go to the pop reports on this card, actually there are fewer 10s in the 1987 than the 86 traded. Um, but and, and there are more 9s. It's about a, a, four, a little over a 4 to 1, uh, 9 to 10s. But still, like, you normally do not see in reason with... Cards with reasonable population counts. Like, we're not talking about 10,000 nines and 500 tens here. Uh, we're talking about, you know, four to four and a half times as many nines to tens. Um, that, to me, does not explain a, a 10, 10x difference in price between the PSA 9 and the PSA 10. That said, at 300 bucks... Topps Tiffany is a rare card, um, especially for that era. Uh, I think it's a great buy. I honestly think that, that these two cards in the PSA 9s are way better buys than the PSA 10s right now. And I think you could see a lot more increase. So, you know, if I had, if I was thinking about spending, you know, $3,000 on one of these PSA 10, uh, 87 Topps Tiffany's, I I would personally consider spending three grand on ten of the PSA nines over one of the PSA tens. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. As always, there are eBay links to the cards that I feature down in the description. Using my links is the best way to support the channel. Anything you purchase within 24 hours brings a small commission back into the channel. I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to come back and visit me again at Card Collects.